Greetings everyone, it's Nanette Saylor again, back with another continuation of our conversation about creativity and how it serves to expand our lives. Uh, most of you know I'm the creativity mentor here in the Expand Your Impact community. I also um, serve as a lead coach at Women's Prosperity Network. And of course, my own company is called Wise Well Women. And you see me playing over on the Conscious Creators Cafe. And one of the things that I was asked to talk about by one of our Conscious Creator Cafe members, thank you, Gail, was this idea of uh, what does it take to be organized as a creator? Does it matter if you're organized as a creator? And um, along the lines of the previous conversation, I, I spoke to the previous concept of can discipline and creativity coexist? Uh, I thought I would expand that dialogue a little bit and talk about organization and creativity. So because to me, discipline and organization, they're, they're two slightly different things, aren't they? So discipline speaks to me about this idea that we stay in practice, that we continue to do things until we improve at them. We practice our drawing, we practice our painting, we practice our singing, we practice our writing, we practice our dancing, we practice our cooking. All of those things are, are creative activities. And by practicing them, by staying in the ritual and the routine and the discipline of doing those things, we get better at it. And not only do we get better at the output, but the experience gets more and more and more enjoyable. So organization is what makes it possible to even begin the practice to begin with. So when I moved into my new, much smaller abode, I now live in a, in a two bedroom apartment. I used to live in a three bedroom house with a 10 by 10 shed in the backyard. Now I have a two bedroom apartment and that's by choice. I live over in a beautiful, beautiful part of the beach here in Boca Raton. I am thrilled to be here. It did require that I give some attention to how it is that I could organize my creative supplies, particularly when it's my intention to expand my impact by doing more workshops. What was one of the reasons that I did less workshops? Because it's a hassle when you're not organized to gather up all your stuff and to be prepared. It's hard on the fly to be prepared when you're not organized. The same is true when you're starting a creative activity. If I wanted to follow my energy today and spend a few minutes coloring, if I couldn't find my coloring book and my gel pens and my Sharpie markers or my colored pencils, it would be a pretty frustrating way to get started with what is supposed to be an expanding and enlivening and energizing activity. The same is true for if I couldn't find my sewing materials, if that's what I wanted to do, if I couldn't find scraps of paper to use in collaging, what if I wanted to do a vision board today, a small one, one of those mini ones that I talked about. If I couldn't find the paper, the scissors, the glue easily, do you think that I would continue that thought or would I get distracted and end up doing something else? I can tell you in my past life, I was often in that place of not being able to find my materials, not find my supplies, and then I would just, oh, say, forget it, and I would give it up. So I wanted to show you today what I was able to create in a really small space. This is a, one of those standard racks you'll see behind me, one of those standard racks you can get in any hardware store, Target, best, uh, all, you name it, you can get it. Mine happened to be around for a long, long time. It might've even come from a thrift store. That's kind of typically where my stuff comes from. But I'm gonna pan this out a little bit and change the view so you can maybe see that I've got tubs of materials there. So this rack, I'm tall so I can reach it quite easily but all of those materials are organized. There's paper in one, there's glue in one, 
There is a little bit of plastic bag stuff in there. I do some creating with plastic bag yarn. I'll, I'll share a little bit of that with you later. So then we come down to the second level. There's fabric here. There's sewing things. Now here I've got some more sewing stuff. I have some beads. The point is not necessarily what it is that I have on the shelf, but you can see that they're all in containers. And then when I go down to the bottom of the rack, if I can do that without cutting my head off, when I go down to the bottom of the rack, now you see all the paper is there. And then even further, let's see if I can show you that, even further down, I have, well, I'm not doing a very good job of showing it to you, but even further down, I have all of my equipment. So my hole punch, my card paper cutter, my big scissors, uh, my um, uh, one of my doodle pad, uh, electronic doodle pads is there. Uh, I have a big camera there. I have a, a, anything that is big and in and is major equipment goes on the bottom shelf. So that's where I know to go for it. Any extension cords might be there. Extra things that I need. My selfie stick is usually there. Any of the equipment that I need. Now my new Bose audio speaker, the uh, Bluetooth speaker is there now too. So the point of all this is that pretty much in a couple of minutes, I can scan through what I have. I know immediately what I need if I don't have it so that I can source it from somewhere else. And if I were running out to work to facilitate a workshop today, I could grab a bag, I could quickly put the supplies that I need. I also keep Ziploc bags in each of those boxes so that the Ziploc bags are available to transfer supplies. And so when I come back, it gets much easier to put the supplies away. Right now, because I use them every week, my markers and my pens are actually in my car. And I do have a small case that I bring in the house, but I'm using my markers and my pens every week, sometimes twice a week at workshops that I facilitate. So those are staying in the car for right now. It just makes it easier. So why am I showing you all this? I'm showing you this because as I started saying in the beginning, if I didn't have this organization, it would be much, much more difficult for me to be able to create quickly. And most importantly, I would be frustrated to no end and I would be wasting time and energy and I would be beating myself up because I'm not prepared and I can't find what I need and on and on and on. Most of you, if you're creative, you've been in that space of being really frustrated because you didn't have the supplies or couldn't find the supplies that you wanted for a project. So is organization necessary? Absolutely. Is it detrimental to your creative flow? Absolutely not. Now you'll see that I have a couple of boxes here that are kind of open-ended so I can just throw things in when I see them because I know me. I know that that's my style and then I can transfer into the boxes if I need to. It's most important that you identify what your style of working is and the materials that you need and that you use all the time so that you can grab them quickly. And so you can create a nice orderly workspace for yourself and you can put them away quickly if that's what's necessary. Now, if I had a whole separate room that was a craft room where I could leave supplies out and I could have projects half done out on the table, beautiful thing. I would still need to have a go-to place for the key items that I use in those projects. So that's how it serves really to keep me in the energy of being in the positive of the creative process, not in the frustration of worrying about what I didn't gather, what I didn't get right, not having the materials, getting halfway done, and then not having what I need. All of that is detrimental to my creative process and particularly relative to creating a business that's based around a creative process it's super detrimental to my psyche to feel like I can't quickly 
put things together in an orderly way to facilitate workshops for clients. That's most important. And if I'm always fumbling around with that, then how could I possibly sell creative workshops frequently if I'm in the back of my mind always worried that I'll never be properly prepared because I'm not organized. So that's the message for today. I hope that it will inspire you to consider getting a little bit of organization around your supplies and your materials, not because I particularly care that it's neat and tidy because that is absolutely not my motivation. What is my motivation is that I know where my materials are when I want to use them and that I want to be ready when I'm inspired by something to drop everything and create if I have the time and the energy to do it without being sidetracked by not having my materials. So I hope you will create something fun today or sometime in the next week. Do make a date with yourself to do something creative. Grab some materials. I know everybody's got something. And I'll be talking soon about the couple of quick ways that you can get your creative juices flowing that don't require a lot of space, don't require a lot of materials, can be done in a short period of time so that you can get started and to be inspired to continue on with something else. So with that, I will sign off. Nanette Saylor, your creativity mentor, enjoying this time together. I hope you are too. Please keep the comments coming so that I can continue to respond with new commentary about how to bring creativity into your life in a really positive way. Bye for now.